Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Councilmember Santiago, are you on the phone? We're just trying to connect with our council member who's traveling. Councilmember Santiago, are you on the phone? Ryan, is there a number I should have her call instead? Councilmember Santiago, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, that's good. Thank you. A little, okay. little bit loud. Okay. That's better. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll begin our municipal council meeting this evening. It's Tuesday, August 18th at 5.45 p.m. We apologize for the late start this evening. We were delayed in some other meetings. The meeting is being broadcast live on Provo City Channel 17 and channel17.provo.org where it's also available for on-demand viewing. The council requests that citizens help maintain the decorum of the meeting by being respectful of those who are presenting and by turning off electronic devices. We'll begin with a roll call starting with our executive director. Matthew Taylor. Ryan Jones. Ava Van Buren. Al Miller. Dave Sewell. Gary Garrett. Allie Hales. Gary Winterton. John Curtis. Corey Norman. Kim Santiago. Thank you. Our opening prayer this evening will be offered by Carolyn Brown, one of our council interns, and she will then lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Carolyn. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be gathered here today in the city council chambers. We're grateful to uh, live in this great city of Provo. And we're grateful for the leaders and ask that thou would please bless them with inspiration and with the matters that they're discussing, that they may be led and do what's best for the city of Provo. We're grateful for the service men and women of this country and ask that thou would please bless them and their families at this time. And we say these things humbly in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Carolyn. Council members have had an opportunity to review the, the minutes from the last two meetings on, held on January, on July 21st, 2015, and August 4th, 2015. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I did have a question. Um, Council Member Hayes, you said that you would have the or by Louise. Uh, yes, Council Member Santiago. The amount. And Janine, Janine amount got those two requests. Yes. Did not match that. Yes. 
Yes, those have been corrected. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Van Buren? I'll make a motion to approve minutes. Motion to approve by Mr. Van Buren. With a second by Ms. Hales. Those in favor? Aye. Thank you. The motion passes unanimously. Next, we have a special <clears throat> recognition this evening, a special presentation that will be made by David Kennard. And we'll turn the time over to him at this time to make this presentation. Well, thank you. Really, the presentation is for my daughter, but I'll uh, get her started here. Um, thank you for having us. Um, my name is David Kennard. This is my daughter, Riley. And uh, we just wanted to take a few minutes of your, of your time to tell you about a project that, um, that uh, really was Riley's idea and uh, that we kind of pulled off and wanted to thank you for your help. And I'll just uh, turn the time over to Riley, and I'll run the, run the slideshow. Uh, you have a handout that um, uh, is the same as the slideshow, so you can follow along there if you like. Thank you, David. Welcome, Riley. Thank you. So the Provo River cleanup that we did was a cleanup project of the lower Provo River. That was on August 1st. The whole idea of this project came from a kayaking trip that my dad and I had taken. And as we kayaked along the river, you could just see these big pockets of trash and debris floating on top of the river. And down in the water, you could see stuff was being collected as well, flip flops, water bottles, things like that. So we kind of got to talking. We were just like, what could we do to get this taken care of and came up with a few ideas. At the time, he was working for the Daily Herald and wrote an article about it. And immediately people just started responding and were energetic and excited about getting involved and wanting to help out. And at that point it was kind of just like, all right, I'm really gonna do this. And so we focused on this lower part of the Provo River. You can see through the river, the water, the river goes through the city and it moves pretty quickly, but down at the end, it slows down quite a bit. And all this stuff, all the trash that gets deposited upstream ends up right down there. So you can imagine how much buildup comes right there. And our goal was to get all of that, or as much of that, out of the water as we could. This is the area that we focused on from Lakeshore Drive to just above this campground. We split it up into about three sections, and we mainly focused on the middle area. That's where we pulled a lot of the bigger stuff out, like tires and mattresses, and there's even chunks of car that we pulled out. We had lots of energetic volunteers that were just ready to help out and get as much stuff as they could out of the water. You can see some of the pictures here, some of the stuff that they pulled out. We also focused a lot on the trailway as well, just getting that picked up. Some of the local media sources picked up this project. It was promoted by the Utah Valley Magazine to help get volunteers together for that. And the day after the project, it was the feature story in the Daily Herald. Some of the results we saw from this, we partnered with the Utah County Association of Realtors. They provided food and drinks for the volunteers. And the city of Provo was actually a big help in providing a dumpster for us. It was a pretty big dumpster and I wasn't sure we were gonna fill it, but by the end of the day, it was pretty loaded up and it was pretty smelly. They also provided the staff to collect the dumpster and the trash bags for the volunteers. We had about 60 people show up and most of them came because they saw the mayor's blog or they saw events on Facebook and other media sources. And together we were able to pull out hundreds of pounds of trash. I mean, we pulled out a lot of big stuff, but it was all wet, muddy, big stuff. And it was a huge impact on the river. That area is not revamped by any means. It's not, it's not like a total makeover thing. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think more than anything, this project was eye-opening to see what needed to be done down there and how much work there really is. I think there is still work to be done. There are things that could be put in place to help it long term, like trash cans and updated signage. 
and I would really love to see this project keep going and to keep improving on that area. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Mr. Winterton? I just wanted to say thank you. That's a family tradition of ours is to take that on the 24th of July is to take that float trip from class ropes there down out to the lake and um, I appreciate all the efforts that goes into that because that will make that a much more, much more pleasant trip. I certainly add my thanks, Riley. Um, so you, you focused on those three areas. You broke that up into three areas. You've kayaked other parts of the river as well. Is it your impression that this same type of uh, reclamation could take place in other sections? Was this where the majority of the problem was? That, there was a lot of work that needed to be done down there. Like I said, there was big stuff that we pulled out, tires, mattresses. Stuff just gets dumped down there. And I haven't looked at it closely as the river goes through the city, but I did go up to the around Vivian Park to see how that area compares to the lower area and there really is such a big difference of mm. how it's being maintained. Mm. I think that also has to do with the flow of the river. I mean mm -hmm. up at the top of Vivian Park we get a good flow down at the bottom it is actually a kind of a delta area where it kind mm -hmm. of rails out and there's just no flow to help yeah. clean itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sewell? I just wanted to say I really uh, appreciated your efforts. I was involved in a conversation yesterday a little bit about civic apathy, and this is, this is the exact opposite of that. Very heartwarming and much appreciated. Thank you. Mayor, any comments? So um, people ask me all the time why Provo is such a great city. And um, the reality of it is, no matter, it's, it's not really what we're doing here on the government side. It's actually things like this that make Provo such a great city. So this is our secret sauce. Thank you, Riley. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That looks like. You know, normally I wouldn't do this, but I wanted to give a, an award to, to the council here. We did find a couple pairs of glasses <laughs> down there. And these, maybe you can pass these on to the Kiwanis or somebody yeah. who collects spectacles, but yeah. I'll present those. Yeah, we might be able to use them <laughs> ourselves. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And Mayor, it looks like another um, brand of t-shirts, Provo Flows, in addition to Provo Rocks. I like the branding that you've done there. So thank you again, Riley. <clears throat> We'll now begin the public comment portion of our meeting. This segment is an opportunity for anyone who's here to comment on matters that do not appear on our agenda. Should you wish to make a comment at the podium, please state your name and city of residence. Should you not wish to speak, but instead have your statement read aloud by the recorder, you can deliver provider with a copy of your statement. She's over here. Those who wish to speak should, should do so courteously and briefly. Please be aware that the council and administration will not take any formal action on matters <clears throat> that arise during public comment, but, but they may respond informally as appropriate. Also, we'd like to remind everyone of the many ways that are available and ways and means for you to address the council and administration, including email, telephone, and social media, all of which are listed on the Provo City website. Provo.org. Those who wish to make comments are invited to approach the podium at this time. Two weeks ago, I came in and asked the council if they would be willing to take on as a special project the implementation of um, pocket neighborhoods here in Provo. I wanted to just give you a few reports and also to, to show up here to let you know that I'm, I'm not going to let go on this one. This is worth doing, and I'm going to follow up. I did hear from uh, Councilman Sewell. Thank you. He indicated that uh, if the Community Development Department was interested in doing this, he could get on board. I heard from uh, Councilman um, Miller, all the way from Peru. Thank you. He indicated that this could be one of the topics uh, that is discussed at the Citizen Zoning Summit that he's putting together for later this fall. 
I also heard from Bill Pepperoni at, at Community Development. He asked um, if uh, I had a specific proposal for property that I owned. And I thought, I need to go and uh, dispel this if this is the case. I do not own any property that I want to create a pocket neighborhood on. I have no vested interest in this. This is just a concept that I have, have seen, which I think would really benefit people in our city. I spent some time on the phone this week with Ross Chapin, who is the architect who designs and promotes pocket neighborhoods. I sent you a link to his website. I hope you've had a chance to look at it. If you haven't, I'll keep reminding you. Uh, he also sent a, a list of proposed programs that he would be willing to give if and when he comes to Provo. Um, I hope you've looked at those. But uh, he said that he was probably going to be in Salt Lake in October presenting there. And I indicated that I would like to go, and I'm offering that invitation if anybody would like, on the council would like to go with me to hear Ross Chapin speak about pocket neighborhoods in Salt Lake in October. Um, I don't have any property that I own, but I know of several parcels that would be great for pocket neighborhoods. Because of the unique subculture in our valley, we, we, we are a perfect place to have a pocket neighborhood where a small group of, usually the pocket neighborhoods he um, designs are between six and 12 homes that nest together and are designed to uh, open onto a central open space rather than have frontage on a street so that these people live together in a smaller neighborhood within a neighborhood. Now, I don't have any property, but the city does. The city has some property that, in fact, will probably be coming to you at some point in time for surplusing. And that is the old police shooting range at the far east end of 3rd South. Recently, the disc golf course that was built was built just directly east of that, up on the bench that, on property that Dell Tyler uh, donated. Daily Herald did an article about that. But the police shooting range is probably going to be surplused and uh, sold to a developer so that the proceeds from that, at least I hope, I hope the council will remember, to designate the proceeds from that sale directly to the development of the Slate Canyon Park complex but it would make an ideal site for a pocket neighborhood. And so I hope you'll consider that. Um, I have a developer in town who is willing to put some money towards design and engineering drawings. He's not willing to do it if the council and community development especially has no interest or resolution towards implementing this. But there, it's, it's still a great idea and I wanted to warn you that I'm not gonna let this go. It's worth doing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCord. If there's no additional public comment, we'll continue with the next item on our council agenda, which is a resolution to submit an opinion question to the residents of Provo City in the November 3rd, 2015 election regarding authorization to impose a local option sales tax as described in Utah Code Section 59-12-1402 for the purposes of funding cultural, recreational, and zoological facilities and organizations. Mr. Bryce Taylor will present this. Mr. Bryce Mumford. Thank you. Chair Garrett, uh, members of council, mayor, thank you for the opportunity to, prove, to come before you today. Um, this item was also discussed about at, uh, at a good length in our work session today and a timeline uh, for what is needed in the future was uh, spelled out and so I would encourage any citizens who may be listening that are interested in knowing a little bit more about what that timeline for the RAP tax uh, proposal might be to, uh, to uh, tune into that work session item and, uh, and we, we listed that out here. The purpose for the, the meeting today is just to kind of give a little background uh, on the RAP tax and basically discuss the resolution uh, a little bit just to give you an idea of what's in it. And so on June 7th, uh, Council may remember that uh, a resolution of intent was passed and uh, was sent to the county indicating uh, the council's interest in placing this item on the, on the uh, upcoming November 3rd election ballot. And uh, in mid-July, we heard back 
from the county that they did not have any intentions of putting this item on for a county-wide wrap tax and therefore gave us the ability to move forward um, if we so desired and so the purpose today is to bring forth that wrap tax resolution formally placing the ballot proposition on the ballot and uh, if we could just uh, pull up the resolution real quick there's three parts well two parts really that are important to understand about this part one um, it basically just states that we're putting the uh, opinion question uh, and we're going to submit it to the residents of Provo City for the no November 3rd 2015 ballot regarding whether the city shall be authorized to implement a 0.1 percent local option sales tax for purposes of funding cultural recreational and zoological facilities botanical and cultural and zoological organizations as authorized by Utah code subsection 59-12-1402 and titled uh, part two of that that uh, says the form of said ballot question shall be as followed meaning this is how the, the question will appear on the ballot with the title and the proposition language as you see there and um, so <clears throat> we came to council we asked if there was any interest in changing any of this language I had not heard from anyone and so uh, at this point I'm open for questions or if you'd like to make a few changes to this document uh, you have the ability to do so, but um, that's the information that I wanted to present today. Thank you, Mr. Mumford. Questions for Bryce? Need to, any council discussion, or if not, we'll entertain a motion mr. Miller turn, turn, Hal, turn your mic. I would like to make a motion to approve the resolution as written we have a motion by mr. Miller to approve the resolution is there a second second Ms. Sunshine. and I would like to add that the budget committee also uh, supported and recommend that we support the um, RAP tax proposal that the administration brought forward at our last work session. Thank you, Ms. Santiago. Any council discussion? Mr. Winterton? Just one quick item. I, I hope that um, the residents know that this is, if they want this, this is something that they can support or not support. And I hope it's more than 7% of the, of our city that will vote, will, will weigh in on this subject, this topic. I trust it will be. Anyone else? And I just, I would also like to say that I appreciate uh, the administration working to address the concerns of the council to take care of what we currently have with the rat tax money. I appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Santiago. Thank you, uh, Kim. Hope you're having a great trip. We are. Thank you. Mr. Sewell? Uh, I just wanted to echo that. I, I felt like the administration uh, made a, a, a good effort to really listen to concerns that we had and uh, really appreciated this last. Uh, proposal that they brought forward so thank you I'll call for a vote then those in favor of this motion please indicate aye and those opposed so in favor of the motion we have council members Miller Sewell Garrett Winterton and Santiago those who have abstained are Mr. Van Buren and Miss Hales so the re resolution passes five to zero with two abstentions. Thank you. <clears throat> we had a we have a very brief agenda this evening, so we appreciate your being with us for this short meeting. I'll now call for a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Sewell with a second. By Mr. Winterton. Those in favor? Aye. Thank you. The meeting's adjourned. Enjoy the rest of your trip, Councilmember Santiago. Thank you.